Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash, which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to send out a hearty Shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk your lives doing so. In efforts of waking up the hopefully elect of the nation of Israel, this is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And uh, Lord's will, this is edifying. Okay, now what I want to go into is, uh, you know, I want to uh, keep this short and um, sweet. Okay, but um, something, you know, that uh, we're all uh, familiar with. Okay, and it's really pretty much the biggest battle that we face in this faith. Okay, and that's the battle between the flesh and the spirit. Okay. And that's why um, you'll hear uh, the elder apostles, um, you know, say the, uh, the, the saying that um, we are our own worst enemy in this in this faith. OK. And the reason that is, is because our spirit, which is in us, which is righteous. OK. Lord willing, we're those men that are going to be delivered. OK. The spirit that's within us is righteous. But the flesh that that spirit is in is absolutely wicked. OK. And that's why uh, we're commanded over and over and over to uh, walk in the spirit, okay, or walk by faith and not by sight, okay, because sight entails what? Walking through fleshly, uh, walking and, um, you know, going after fleshly lusts, okay? Why? Because like the scriptures say, we were formed in sin, okay? And that's the whole battle. That's the whole battle of you conquering your flesh, and the only way you're going to be able to do that is through the spirit, okay? And more specifically, the Holy Spirit, Okay, and what is the Holy Spirit? Well, we'll get a quick precept just to edify that point. This is St. John chapter 6, verse 63. It says, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing. Okay, and that's a key point, man. You know, and uh, as of late, you know, I've heard this scripture thousands and thousands and thousands of times. Okay, but, you know, hey, <laughs> I, I pretty much say this in every lesson, like Elder Apostle Gabar says, uh, uh, repetition is the father's skill, you see? So we need to hear these scriptures over and over and over again. Why? So that it could be cemented in our minds, okay? Especially uh, uh, understanding the times that we're coming into. And, you know, they're only, you know, and I say this facetiously, they're only the worst times ever, okay? So it's paramount, okay, and extremely fundamental that we cement, especially the basic scriptures, the core uh, uh, precepts, you know, and that milk, okay? The scriptures tell us to de desire that sincere milk, okay? Because guess what? That's our foundation. Now, when we go into the breakdowns and, you know, of course, that is necessary, okay? But before you can even get to that, you have your, your core and your foundation has to be solid. It's just like building a house, okay? You can't start to put windows or walls up unless you've laid what? The foundation. Okay, so the same thing in this truth. Okay, but uh, like I say, I've read this scripture thousands and thousands of times, but as of late, you know, within the past three or four months, fully, fully uh, uh, ingested what the scriptures is saying, man. Okay, at least this part of it. It says, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profit of nothing. You see? And you got to sit back and look at that. Your flesh profits you nothing. Okay? And another script that pops into mind is, uh, where it says exercise profit of little, you see? So actually working out, and that's been the spirit too. You know, brother, a lot of brothers are starting to work out and getting their temples in order, okay? Because, hey, Lord knows what, what, what's in store for us and what path we have to traverse ultimately to get to, uh, uh, to be delivered, okay? So it wouldn't hurt, okay? It profits a little. But here it's saying the flesh profit of nothing, you see? So that should put you in the mindset of, look, we need to walk in the spirit as much as possible. Now, are you going to do it all the time? No, because if that was the case, you didn't need, you won't need Yahweh Shai, okay, to return and deliver you, okay? Because guess what he did? He conquered the flesh, you see? So it's really not our job to get it right on this side. I mean, 100% right. That's what I mean, okay? And like I stated earlier, the spirits within us are righteous, it's just this flesh that we're in profits nothing, nothing. 
Nothing good come from this flesh that we're in. Okay, I believe the Apostle Paul said that. Verse 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profit of nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay, so here it is. The Messiah is giving us a dichotomy. Okay, you, you're in your flesh and that flesh is not going to profit you anything. Nothing. If it, at, at best, it's going to bring you down. Okay, but like he said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay. And what's another word for spirit? Ghost. Okay. So when you're dealing with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, you're speaking about what? The word. Okay. And our Lord Yahweh Shai is the word. He embodies the word. Okay. Like it says, um, oh, I just left my mind. Um, he comes in the volume of the book. It is written of him. Okay. So that shows you right there primarily what our goal is to be, to it, which is to walk in the spirit. Okay. Cause your flesh is on a on a, a wrecking ball or on a, a wrecking path to get you destroyed. Okay. Why? Because it was sown in wickedness. It was sown in sin. Okay. So that's the, our whole battle is to fight off this flesh with this Holy spirit, meaning we need to walk in the spirit and do the things that are conducive. Okay. To us walking in the spirit as much as possible. <laughs> Cause this flesh ain't nothing good about this flesh, man. Every day you wake up is deteriorating. You're shedding skin all in the bed. <laughs> you know, the older you get, the the the, the less uh, uh, the less your your mind works. You know, and it's just all bad. It's just all bad. And of course, this happens because we sinned. Okay, like the scriptures tell you. Uh, 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 roughly paraphrasing that, um, you know, men have lost their stature. Okay. Like there was a certain point men lived 900 years. Okay. Now, uh, uh the scriptures say, uh, three score, three score and 10, which is, uh, you know, a score is 20. So, uh, 60 and 10, that's 70 years old. And when you look at it, that's accurate, man. Okay. Most people that are 70 years old got to take a slew of, uh, of, of medications just to stay alive. You see? So if, it weren't for Esau's uh, 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 wizardry and, and witchcraft, a lot of these people would, would have dropped dead, okay? So, but the main point, th this flesh ain't about shit, man, okay? We, we need to walk after the spirit as much as possible, okay? Let's get um, Romans and get an account from one of the most renowned men of the scriptures, okay? The Apostle Paul, Romans chapter 7. And we'll start at six, Romans seven and six. It says, but now we are delivered from the law that being dead, wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. OK, going into, uh, you know, pretty much the vibration that the wicked scribes and Pharisees and the high priests were pushing. It's all about the law, law, law. OK, just like I use IUIC pushes. OK, when the fact of the matter is, according to the first covenant, if you break one of the laws, you've broken them all. OK, so who would be worthy of deliverance? OK, and we need to thank our heavenly father through his son. OK, the water you how about Shemiah Shai, that he sacrificed his only begotten son so that um, Lord willing, we can receive this second covenant. OK, which all of Israel will inherit. OK. But just the elect will on the first go round. It says, um, verse seven, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? The most high forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. You see? So just like it says in the book of James, uh, he that knows to do good and does it not to him, it is sin. You see? Because ultimately, before you came into this thing, you really didn't know what you were doing. OK, and that was a part of that grace period. But once you wake up to the understanding of this thing, your job is to try your best. OK, to uh, uh, offend less. OK, and how do you offend the Heavenly Father? By sinning. Now, are we going to get it perfect? Absolutely not. That was only required of our Lord. Yeah, I was shy. OK, but uh, it says. Um, verse eight. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. You see? Verse 9. For I was alive without the law once, 
But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. You see? So it's going into that newness of mind, that newness of spirit. It says, verse 10, and the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Verse 11, for sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. Verse 12, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with the law. It's something wrong with us. Okay, like the scriptures say, finding fault with them. Okay, the fault was with us, not the not the uh, covenant or the commandments. They're perfect. Okay, and and what's what's gonna prove that is once the second second covenant is uh, implemented. Okay, meaning the laws are written in our inward parts, and we can't possibly sin. Okay, we're gonna see what the heavenly Father intended. Okay, we're gonna see absolute perfection, absolute righteousness. Okay, throughout not just the the, the earth. OK, throughout the universe. OK, because the law is perfect. It's spiritual. OK, it's just that man is not perfect. OK, and this is what's part of God's plan. OK, for us to be molded and, and to go through that fire so we can be that uh, those joint heirs with our Lord. Yahweh Shai. Verse 13 was then that which is good made death unto. So like I read it again, 13 was then that which is good made death unto me, meaning the law. It says the most high forbid, but sin that it might appear sin working death in me by the that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Verse 14, for we know that the law is spiritual. You see, it's absolutely spiritual. He says, but I am carnal, sold under sin. You see? So here it is. The Apostle Paul is pointing out, hey, that, that battle that each and every one of us deal with in his faith, man. Okay? It says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. You see? And everybody, every last one of us, from Elder Apostle to heart on down, this is true. Okay? So it's inciting that there's a war going on. OK. Why? Because we were sold under sin. OK. And we're carnal, but we're trying to keep a spiritual law, you know. But like I mentioned earlier, as long as we try and we press towards that mark. OK. And we're repetitive and remorseful when we do go off. OK. The most high get us up out of here, man. And then we can keep this law perfect. Why? Because we'll be the 100 percent spiritual men that we need to be. OK, we won't be sold in, in, in sin or under this in this wicked flesh. You see, verse 15, for that which I do, I allow not for what I would that do I not. But what I hate that do I and every brother in this faith has this testimony. You know, a lot of times you know not to do that, but you did it anyway. OK, and you got kicked in the ass, you see. And why is that? I read 14 again, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. You see? So that's the whole battle. And to be honest, brothers, we're going to have to fight that fight all the way until we're on the chariot. Okay? So that's why it's imperative that uh, we do the things that builds up our spiritual vibration. Okay? That spiritual man within us. Okay? We have to constantly feed uh, 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 that, uh, our spirit, man. Okay? And deny our flesh. Flesh. Salakia. Verse 17, now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And that's heavy, man. That's heavy. Okay? Because when you deal with sincere brothers and, you know, I feel the same and I've spoken with other brothers. Okay? And we all feel the same that I, I don't want to sin no more, man. Okay? But, hey, we, we're not in that predicament yet. Okay? But guess what? The scriptures say the most high search of the reins. And guess what? The men that are humble and contrite spirit. And when, when you really look at it, what are we humble and contrite about? That we keep offending the Heavenly Father. OK. And of course, it's not willfully, you know, but it's because like the Apostle Paul said, or 17 again. Now, then I do it. Slock you. Now, then it is no more. I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is that is in my flesh dwelleth. 
no good thing. Tying into what the Messiah just, uh, uh, what we just read, what the Messiah said, okay? The flesh profit of nothing. You see? So whenever we lead with the flesh, we're going to learn a lesson, okay? Because ain't nothing good about our flesh, nothing, okay? Even we, before we came into this faith, we were wicked as all outdoors, you know? Adding sin unto sin of the congregation of the dead. Hey, but the Wadi Yahweh Bashim Shah, he washed us and cleansed us, okay? And guess what? We're considered to be a menstrual cloth, okay? Washed out. Like the scriptures say, our righteousness is as filthy rags. And, and now that you look at it, okay, our righteousness, which is our spirit, okay, is, is not our flesh, it's our spirit. But what is it uh, uh, contained in? This dirty flesh, okay, that menstruous cloth. Hey, but the scriptures also say the most high judge on the inward and not the outward, you see? So it's a beautiful thing, brothers. Verse 18 again. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. Salakia. It says, for to, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would do, for the good that I would, I, Salakia. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more that do it, no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. You see, it says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of the Most High after the inward man. You see? And that's what the fight is, brothers. Let's work on the inward man. Forget the outward man, okay? Because if we don't do the things that are conducive to salvation, the outward man is going to die anyway, you see? Or if we do the things that are conducive to salvation, the outward man is going to die anyway, okay? Why? Because these, this flesh cannot inherit in corruption. It can't. We're going to be changed. The scriptures say we're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye, Okay? So guess what? That that righteous spirit that's within us can be uh, 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 coupled with this righteous, this new uh, extraterrestrial body that we're about to receive. Lord willing, with those men. OK, so hey, the Apostle Paul broke it all the way down. And this is like, you know, this is comforting when you when you read this chapter, man. OK, because uh, the scriptures tell you not to be condemned in your sins. OK, and, and this is the reason why. Okay, because ain't nothing good about your flesh, nothing. Okay, and we're not perfect. Now we're striving after uh, that perfection. The scriptures say, "Be ye perfect, like your Father is, which is in heaven." Okay, that's the goal. But we're not gonna do it on this side until we're changed. You see? Now, does that give you a cloak or, or, or uh, to be malicious and you know, well, say, well, you know, I'm in this wicked flesh, all right? No, 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 that ain't the spirit. Like I've mentioned earlier, the Lord said He search of the reins. Okay. <laughs> the Lord going to get down to the nitty gritty of the matter. Okay. This is, uh, what do I want? Galatians chapter five. Okay. And this is, you know, a topic that we, we brothers know, you know, we deal with and we know this is the basis of our walk. Okay. But more so coming down the pipe, man, that the, towards the end times, man, because we're going to see some things that are going to try us, man. Okay. They're going to try our flesh, you know, but hey, the, 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 the goal is to lead by the spirit. OK, because understanding, look, yeah, may, maybe it's a scenario. That, hey, the scriptures say we're going to uh, uh, be merry and have abundance. OK, but for some brothers, their trial may be that they haven't eaten in a day. OK, but guess what? We fast, you know. So, uh, 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 uh. You know, Satan can use that to say, look, you haven't eaten in a day. The Lord ain't dealing with you, you know. And we know the games that uh, uh, Satan plays. It's on a high level. It's on a divine level. OK, we know who he works for and he's going to tempt that flesh. But what is the spirit saying? Hey, man shall not live off of bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the most high. You see, so that's really what it boils down to. This is Galatians chapter five. And. Um.
We'll start at 16. Get straight to the point. Galatians 5 and 16. It says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And that's plain, brothers. That's plain. Okay? And, 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 and it's, it, it's yay and nay. It ain't no, well, you know, sometimes. No, no, no. You walk in the, you walk in the spirit, you're going to deny the flesh. I read it again. Verse 6, 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay? Now, of course, easier said than done. And like I say, this is, you know, pretty much the biggest battle that we deal with. Okay? And like I mentioned earlier, the elders always say, you are your biggest enemy. Okay? Because uh, when you step back, and that's what we all have to do from time to time. You know, the brother... Uh, uh, on, on social media and the brother Tazama from the Dallas camp, you know, of course he was speaking in code. He wasn't directing it to brothers specifically, but it was, okay? He basically was saying, look, step back sometime. Step back and, 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 and be circumspect, okay? Which is commanded of the scriptures. You know, be ye circumspect, not just with watching the times and uh, uh, what's going on around you, but also your walk, you know? The scriptures say, uh, uh, um, uh, roughly paraphrasing, uh, examine yourselves, know whether or not you are of the faith. OK. And when you step back, you can see that. Look, the Lord is dealing with you, man. You should know that by now. The Lord is dealing with you. OK. So why are you uh, 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 in a rut and dragging your knuckles on the ground because you went off a couple of times? You know, hey, that's the battle, brothers. That's the battle. Paul, we just read it with Paul. You know, that's going to be the case until we deliver. But what are your what is your reins? What is your intent? Okay, are you humble and contrite? Are you brokenhearted? Are you tired of sinning against the Lord? Those are the men that he's dealing with. That's what the scriptures say. It says, verse 16 again, this I say, then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh for the flesh lusteth against the spirit. You see, and when you when you really look at it, this is divine, man, because the Lord, hey, he said, uh, uh, false balancing is an abomination, but a just weight is his is his pleasure. Roughly paraphrasing, okay, or his delight. Salaki uh, for butchering it, but um, meaning a just measure. And guess what? We're called to be those just balances, okay, or that just measure. And and what's gonna make us a uh, 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 just and balance, okay? I'll read it again, verse 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. OK, and that's the biggest aspect of it. OK, of walking in the spirit, because if you're walking in the spirit, you're not under the law. OK, now, of course, we have to keep the law like the apostle. It says in Romans, the third chapter, matter of fact. Let's get there real quick. I'll come back. Yeah, see if it's any more meat on that. Um, Romans chapter three. And um, I started 28 Romans three and 28. It says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of law. Is he the power of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Verse 30, seeing it is one power which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yeah, we established the law. OK, so now we don't take the fact that, OK, we're walking in the faith. That means, you know, uh, we're not under the law. That means don't we don't have to keep the deeds of the law. Of course not, man. OK, because guess what? We know that's what civilizes people, and that's our wisdom in the sight of the nations, okay? Obedience, especially obedience to an invisible power, okay? Meaning we can't see him now, you see? And that's really what we're being judged by. Can you honor a power that you can't see? Can you walk by faith, you see? And those that, uh, uh, the answer is yes, they're going to walk by faith, and they're going to keep the commandments to the best of their ability, why? Because they know the, the law is spiritual and we're thriving to be what? Those spiritual beings that the Lord wants. So back at Galatians uh, 5, and, uh, I start at 18. It says, but if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. 
Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the most high. Okay, so it's deadly serious. <laughs> okay. And that's why the scriptures call for us to do what? To mortify the deeds of the flesh. Okay, because it's going to get you put to death. And that's how it's set up. That's the dichotomy. And that's how the Lord prepared it, man. Okay, so ultimately we can have that balance. Okay, and that constant fight. The scriptures call this what? A good fight. Okay, when you're watching a boxing match and one guy's just welling on the other guy and beats his ass in two minutes, you're not going to call that a good fight. Okay, now the fight goes the distance. OK, and then saying the last round, a guy gets knocked out or wins by decision. What do you say? That's a good fight. And that's exactly what we're part of, man. OK, you're going to win some. You're going to lose some meaning rounds, you know, put it in a uh, parable. OK, but ultimately, if you stay in the fight, we're going to win. OK, because the victory is already gotten by our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah. We just got to stay in the fight and keep enduring. You see, and it's all simplified in that, man. That's a beautiful thing. This is, uh, we'll get one more. We'll close out. This is uh, the book of Romans, chapter 8. And I started, let's see. We'll start at uh, 10. This is Romans 8 and 10. It says, and if Hamashiach be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. You see? So uh, tying into what I was saying about the spirit within us being righteous. Why? Because we're of Yahweh Shai. You see? We've allowed him to guide our steps and to be our shepherd. So, hey, our flesh is dead. You know? Our body is dead. So why would you even adhere to it? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And it's kind of asinine and ass backwards. It says, and if Hamashiach be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Okay, going back to St. John 6, 6, 6 and 63. The words that I speak unto you, they are life. You see? The flesh profit of nothing. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh shot from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Hamashiach from the dead shall also quicken, quicken your, your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. You see? So tying it all in together, all the scriptures we brought out, you're seeing the, uh, uh, the manifestation of it, man. Okay? And really, that's the real comfort that really it's the Lord working within us, man. Okay? It's, it's just our job, okay, to, to, to keep our minds on it, to, to uh, hold fast what we have which is this understanding, okay, and continue to fight. It says, verse 12, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh, for if you live after the flesh, <laughs> you shall die. And that's plain. That's plain. And that's why it's a beautiful thing that when you deal with these scriptures, it's this or that, okay? Because when you go into gray areas, then that brings confusion. The Lord said, you walk after the flesh if you want, I'm going to kill you. Plain and simple. It says, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. And that's how it's going to work. Okay. The more you attend to the spirit and feed the spirit, you're going to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Okay. Because guess what? The things of the flesh are not going to appease you anymore. Okay. You know, of course, hey, we love women. Okay. But the way that I lusted after women in the world is night and day compared to how I am in this in this truth. Okay, why? Because you get the understanding that look, hey, if we endure to the end, like <laughs> Elder Possible Bar likes to say, hey brothers, and I'm not mocking him, you know. Uh, he says, hey brothers, if 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 you're of the elect, you're good. Okay, and that's true, man. And really, when you have that understanding, you ain't really lusting after things of the flesh. Okay, or, or a nice car or. Or, 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 or a gang of shoes. Now, hey, there are brothers who have those things, okay, that can afford those things. And when you really look at it, 
The only people that should have nice cars and, and, and decent shoes that can afford it are men of the Lord. Why? Because they fully understand that the Most High going to melt all of that shit. You see? So therefore, we're not lusting after. We're not thirsting after. We're thirsting after righteousness. Okay? But we, we, we're still here. Okay? It says, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of the most high, they are the sons of the most high. Okay. And that's a direct indicator. Because when you look around, these people are not walking after the spirit. Okay. If they were walking after the spirit, they wouldn't go get a jab. You see? Or get the curly perm activated. They wouldn't do that if they were walking after the spirit. Because the spirit would tell them, look. A lot of these people going to do these things because they may lose their job or may lose their their, their uh uh the, the the little few little peanuts Esau throws them. But guess what? You're gonna lose that shit anyway. You see? Cause why? They're living after the flesh, they're walking after the flesh. Okay, the carnal wants and needs. Hey, what we want is 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 our spirit is thirsting for, not our flesh. Fuck this flesh. Okay, brothers say all the time, man, we need new bodies, man. We need new bodies. Okay, I got infirmities up the wazoo. You know, I need new flesh. Fuck this flesh. You know, the things I've done in my life prior to me coming into this faith. Okay, I'm playing catch up now. The regimen I have to take every morning just to function and to be, you know, uh, uh, productive. Okay, it is crazy, you know, but I, I, I have to do it. I need to do it. It's good for me. Okay, because for so long, we destroyed our bodies, you see? And that's another benefit of coming into this faith and, and understanding the spirit. It says, for ye, uh, verse 14 again, for as many as are led by the spirit of the most high, they are the sons of the most high. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Okay. So that's it, brother. That's it in a nutshell, man. Okay? Just keep doing the things that's going to uh, benefit our spirit. Keep pushing out these lessons. Get around the brothers. Pray. Fast when need be. You know? Fuck the flesh, man. Okay? Hey, and brothers have been talking about slowing down on the drinking, you know, and, and hitting certain spots. Okay? Why? Because that, that really ain't helping our spirit, man. It's really attending to the flesh. Now, are we dead wrong for doing it? Of course not. OK, but the closer we get to the end of this thing, the more we need to feed that spirit, man. OK, and I'm speaking to myself first and foremost. OK, so um, like I said, I don't want to make this too long, but, you know, the spirit does what it wants. And I just pray that it was edifying. OK, so with that, I say Shalom.